Hello everyone. Uh, hello everyone. My name is Juan Eto. Today I'm going to present to you uh, the work that we carried out in the best group and under supervision of the Professor of India at the University of Glasgow. The work is named the Vanadium Pentoxide Nanowires Based Flexible Temperature Sensor. This mod in this um, presentation, I'll speak to you about the motivation that we're following, the temperature sensing applications and materials, fabrications, fabrication schematic results and some conclusions. So what are the main applications of flexible temperature sensors? We can have them integrated in textiles, like for clothes. We can do tattoo like, uh, like electronic skins uh, sensors, as you can see here on the right. We can do wearable bands, healthcare monitoring, prostating limbs, and soft robotics. So there is a variety of, of applications that we can approach by having a flexible temperature sensor. And um, what uh, do we require from such sensors? Uh, first, we need a large sensitivity. We need a fast response and high accuracy, good rep repeatability over time, a wide temperature range from 20 to 40 degrees Celsius. This is preferable if we are going for healthcare monitoring or skin, for example, and a good bendability of the sensors to keep the performance while we are going under stress. So what are the main materials used for this uh, temperature sensing? So there are a variety of materials, of course, also. So we have conductive composites like carbon-based uh, graphene and polymers like P.PSS, they have really good performance, but they may like reliability over time because they're organics and the environment will impact their performance. We also have metals like platinum and nickel, but they, they also have really good performances, but so you can lack uh, uh, part of the sensitivity. And uh, inorganic semiconductors or other nanostructures uh, like uh, nanowires. And today I'm going to speak to you about nanowires because it's the approach we are taking. So why do we want to use inorganic nanowires? Because they have high crystallinity, which will lead to um, a very good uh, electrical performance. You also have a large aspect ratio, and this will lead to a very good um, sensing area, so improve the sensor capabilities. Uh, good mechanical properties, which is very much what we need for, um, for uh, our, um, our flexible sensors. And we can also grow uh, an eye dense uh, amount of nanowires at low costs, which makes them very attractive for a manufacturing point of view. So how are we assembling such nanowires? We're going to need two main things. First, the nanowire dispersion and our substrate assemblies. The nanowire dispersion, we bought commercially vanadium pentoxide nanowires and dispersed them, and we dispersed them in water. And um, our uh, setup is mainly focused on the assembly of substrates so we're going to have a rigid substrate like glass where we're going to put our dp electrodes so we are doing a dielectrophoretic nanowire alignment so an electric field assisted alignment and you can see here uh, on our electrodes that are on the bottom there is a very small gap so the electrodes are not shorted so when you apply voltage in these very small regions very small gaps around 100 micron or less gaps, a uh, very strong electric field will be generated. So looking again at the assembly, we're going to have the rigid substrate, the glass substrate, our DAP electrodes, and a double side tape with a super straight, a flexible super straight on the top. So we're going to be aligning our nanowires on top of the flexible substrate. And we do this by applying the field and, this, and uh, drop casting our nanowire dispersion on top. So on the, with these, we're going to have an electric field alignment. You can see here that the electric field will basically attract and trap the nanowires on these locations. So we're going to have, when we remove the drop, we're going to have aligned nanowires. And after this, we just need to fabricate our sensor, which we did through lithography, by depositing our sensor electrodes. electrodes. And you can see here uh, a live uh, an image, a photo basically that we took from our flexible sensor. Uh, here is more of, it's not the schematic, it's more a real life, um, a real pictures of what uh, we are doing. So you can see on the back the DP electrodes. So they are, they are on the bottom, they're not on the top side touching our nanowires. And uh, this whitish more part here is the line nanowires, as you can see here on the SM image. On the best locations alignment sites, we got around for five nanowires per micron. 
And uh, on the right side, you can see here the fabricated electrodes on top of the nanowires and with a channel length of around 16 microns and the fabricated matrix of the, of the sensors. Uh, some results. You can see on the left side, the metal nanowire ohmic contact, where we have a good ohmic contact is really important for the performance of our device. Uh, for to test the temperature change of our sensor, we placed our sensor still on a glass slide, <clears throat> still on the glass slide on an hot plate. Uh, so every two minutes, we increase the hot plate temperature by five degrees, and you can see a good response, a linear response to, to the change in resistance. Here, on the left side, is basically the response with the temperature that you made according to the last slide, to the, the last graph. And um, we have approximately 20% response uh, with 20 degrees, which is going to lead to a 1% change every degree Celsius. So this is a very good value, uh, comparable to, to the set of the art sensors also. And the response time that we got by placing from room temperature to that plate at 30 degrees, we got 73 uh, se seconds of response and 40 seconds of response. So this is a bit high um, uh, value, but we have to take into consideration that our sensor is not encapsulated and uh, is still on the glass slide. So the transfer of heat needs to go to the glass slide, to the polymide, and then reach the actually active material. So this is a high value, uh, mainly due to this, uh, to this uh, context. So some conclusions and future work. We have uh, aligned vanadium paint oxide nanowires and obtained a sensitivity of minus 1% uh, per Celsius. Our sensor still requires encapsulation to prevent atmospheric interference. And we have to do these characterizations with encapsulation directly in uh, do the temperature characterizations with the sensor facing directly the hot, the hot zone. So basically there will be no transfer of heat through the glass or to the polymer, it will be directly on the active material. So this will greatly enhance the response times. And we also need to make flexibility and bending characterizations. Uh, so what we are showing you here is basically preliminary work for uh, e-skin flexible sensors. So I'd like to acknowledge um, mainly everyone in my group, the best group also, and the Flex, Flex Conference, uh, the New Touch, the New Touch and the European Commission, the EPSRC, um, uh, Council and the James Watton Fabrication Sensor and also the Atroprint project. Uh, thank you very much. And uh, if you enjoy this presentation on our work and if you want to further see what we are doing, just follow these links from the from the to see more the research that we are doing on the best group. So thank you very much. Hope that you enjoy the presentation. <clears throat>